Hi Cosmonauts, I hope you're doing well. We've recently had the announcement of two new airdrops in the cosmos, Saga and Wormhole, which are two highly anticipated projects. Today, we'll talk about the Saga project, and then we'll see the eligibility criteria and how to claim its airdrop. Saga offers a new ecosystem based on the stack technique created by the Cosmos Hub. Saga will have its own sovereign layer 1 secured by its token Saga. The infrastructure of the Saga ecosystem is similar to the Atom Economic Zone 1. It shares a security hub but with more modular characteristics which aims to be more scalable and that serves small chains than those of the Atom Economic Zone. You will have understood that Saga takes up the concept of ICS, Interchain Security, from Atom. For the moment, the Saga ecosystem focuses on a specific application sector, whose security needs are much lower than those of DeFi app chains. That's why they call these chains chainlets. And for the moment, this sector is gaming. Saga can easily be distinguished from the value provided by Atom by offering BD and a tailor-made product for each chain. There is clearly a place to be taken in this direction. At Atom, the equivalent of the Saga incubator would be informal. But again, this is for large-scale projects. Saga aims to simplify and automate the creation of chainlets as much as possible. This means that developers only need to present their smart contract to create their app chain. Saga takes care of creating the chainlet with any suitable virtual machine and security replicated by the parent chain Saga. Thus, there will be as many chainlets as there are smart contracts. But all of this comes at a cost. Saga validators will have to provide the infrastructure for each chain. Each chainlet will have to pay the price of this infrastructure on the Saga marketplace, where the price chosen by the validators will be announced in exchange for the service. In order for these prices to come as close as possible to the actual cost of the infrastructure, Saga implements an incentive system in tokens to compensate the top 75% and 85% of the cheapest validators. Unlike Atom's ICS, where consumer chains pay a proportionate amount based on their revenues, Saga does not take any revenue from its chainlets. It simply rents block space with horizontal scaling. This brings it closer to the business model of Amazon Web Server, which is quite unique. If I were to make a comparison, I would place it between ICS and Layer 2. In theory, this is cool, but you'll see why the rest of the adventure doesn't make it competitive at all compared to Layer 2, especially in this specific gaming sector it heavily relies on. The business of offering blockchain as a service in addition to security is indeed very interesting. However, what about an ecosystem of chainlets specific to gaming? Is there really a value proposition for game developers? Why would a game want to have its own chain rather than a smart contract on zero-knowledge rollup with an off-chain provable game? engine. Can you imagine gaming on-chain with a Tendermint consensus? It's simply unfeasible without skyrocketing network fees and without horizontally scaling the game across a hundred chains. But even then, infrastructure cost would skyrocket. In short, gaming on-chain on a Tendermint chain is a no-go unless we reduce the number of validators to one or two. But at that point, it's too centralized to call it on-chain. Furthermore, Saga presents the gaming ecosystem as full of small chainlets with a relatively uniform demand for block space. However, the reality of gaming is much more chaotic, with a dominant winner taking most of the market share and many microgames without users, resembling more of a phantom chain ecosystem. If you have a better name for phantom chains, feel free to suggest it. If we think about it, we could see this phantom chain ecosystem emerge if Saga builds it, but alongside a gaming giant that constructs its own sovereign chain, with its own security based on its own profits. Think of the future PUBG chain, or the already live passage layer 1, both of which will incorporate decentralized components but with a likely centralized game engine. The choice of gaming on-chain, meaning a game with high TPS restricted by a consensus mechanism, is either prohibitively expensive and unplayable or unfeasible without off-chain computation, which is cost-effective. If the game engine is off-chain, it meets the need for scalability at the expense of almost non-existent transaction fees, but then the game is no longer decentralized, permissionless and trustless. However, today it is possible to achieve scalable gaming entirely on-chain thanks to another technological framework that Saga does not mention. I'm not saying they're not working on it. I believe Saga could achieve this, especially if they collaborate with their neighbor Akash. But I haven't seen anything at that level from Saga. All right. 
to achieve true gaming on-chain that, first of all, doesn't require you to trust the game engine, and secondly, doesn't restrict you by consensus and game execution, making it much more scalable, you need an off-chain game engine that is verifiable on-chain. And what better than zero-knowledge proofs produced by the decentralized actor, the game engine? You'll also need a rollup that can bridge the gap between the zero-knowledge proof of the game's reality to the consensus and data availability of a layer 1, which could have been Saga or the chainlet itself. But to me, it doesn't make sense to have other layer 1 besides Saga. Instead of many chainlets, they could have been many on-chain gaming layer 2 that leverage Akash to rent computational power, enabling the proof of game state with zero-knowledge. In my opinion, Saga clearly has use cases, but not in the gaming sector. I am extremely bullish on gaming on-chain for this cycle, but Saga won't be the one that interests me. We'll see if they persist in this direction. I hope not. Or if they adapt to the new solutions that I mentioned. In the meantime, the chains as a service business is also something that should benefit from the upcoming blockchain bull run. Many businesses will want to have their own chains, just as many wanted to have their own website at the beginning of the internet, even if it didn't necessarily make sense for the company in question. Now, let's look at the eligibility criteria for the Saga token airdrop. Saga airdrop to three communities in particular, those of Celestia, Polygon and Avalanche. And in recognition of all the development without which Saga could not exist, they also choose to airdrop to Atom stakers. Each airdropped individual is classified based on the amount staked into small, medium or large drops, with a multiple of five times between each category. Additionally, there's a loyalty bonus multiplier of four times for those who have shown great loyalty within each community. In the Atom community, if you increase your stake from April 20, 2023 to October 20, 2023 and had more than 25 Atom stacked on October 20, 2023, then you are eligible for a portion of the Saga airdrop. You are entitled to a loyalty bonus if you increase your stake by 30% during this period. If you had up to 64 atoms staked, you fall into the small category. If you had up to 188 atom, you are in the medium category. And if you have more, you are in the large category. In the Celestia community, you need to have staked more than 23 TIA on January 12th, 2023. Small participants are those who stake up to 99 TIA. Medium participants are those who stake up to 204 TIA. And those who stake more are in the large category. For the Polygon community, you need to have staked at least 300 Matic on October 20, 2023, or bridge at least 0.4 Ethereum to Polygon Zero Knowledge Ethereum Virtual Machine Network. There's a loyalty bonus for those who increase their stake between April and October 2023. And finally, Saga airdrops the stakers of the Avalanche community. You have all the links in the description, since a portion of the airdrop is given to those who participated in the Three Kingdoms game and the developer tournament. Like me, you probably didn't participate, and if you did, you're already aware of all this, so no need for further details. Without further ado, let's proceed to claim our Saga tokens. As you can see, you don't have much time to claim this airdrop, so be sure to do it quickly if you haven't already. To do this, it's very simple. You just need to connect your Kepler wallet to the official Saga airdrop website, claim.airdrop.saga.xyz. Then, prove that it's indeed your wallet by signing the transaction. But that's not all. Since only Saga account is connected, you also need to manually connect Cosmos and Celestia. Once that's done, you'll see your eligibility and just have to claim. Similarly, you need to connect your Ethereum virtual machine address wallet and your Avalanche address wallet. That's all for this video. I thank Theos for putting together this video. Without him, you wouldn't have this video or the one introducing the Osmosis project, or the one on the Neutron, which he entirely produced on his French YouTube channel. Thank you, and goodbye cosmonauts.